Now let us prepare our hearts and mind for the worship of God. As we begin, we light these candles to help us remember that God is with us in this time and in this place. Here is the place we can bring our pain and hopes, for our God carries them with us. Here is where we can listen for our calling. For Jesus invites us to serve with him in the world. Here is the place where we are surrounded by grace. For the Spirit hears our hearts and heals them. We invite you to stand in spirit and in body if you can and join us as we sing our opening hymn. And gather us in number 284 in your hymnal. The words will also be on the screen. Good start. The new light is indeed shining. Will you join me uh, in this morning's prayers? When you hear me say, O oh God of love, you are invited to respond, hear our prayer. At the end, we will join together in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. We pray in gratitude for the many gifts this community enjoys. O God of love, hear our prayer. we lift in prayer the health and well-being of friends and family, including 
recovery for Ruben's dad following surgery, for Tom's brother's diagnosis, for those in ongoing treatment, including Dia, Sonia, Pam, and Barb. O oh God of love, for victims of wars, pestilence, natural and unnatural disasters, O oh God of love, in this time of leadership transitions, of some uncertainty here at Central, we thank you, God, for the cloud of witnesses that surround us and the capable leadership of those who are here. God, we find ourselves deeply unsettled and worried about potential outcomes of the impending election and about deep divisions in this country that we love. Help us to remember that you are still in charge and always with us if we but slow down and listen. In a time of widespread and growing hunger and food insecurity, help us to find good ways to work for justice as well as offer charity. Thank you, God, for bringing new folks to join us on this journey towards the world you desire for all your children. Thank you for the good news of the gospel we find here. And we pray now as you taught us, our Creator, who art in heaven.
Uh, today's scripture reading comes from Genesis 2, 4 through 10. This is an account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth. And there was no one to work the ground, but streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it was separated into four headwaters. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And the children can come up for the children's moment. Good morning, my friends. Good morning. So today's scripture, the story that Mr. Phil read, was all about the Garden of Eden. And that's that story that we tell about the first days on earth. And one verse that I heard said, in the garden were trees that were pleasant to look at and trees that were good for food. And in the middle of the garden were the tree of life in the tree of knowledge. And that got me to thinking how much gardens give us, right? We get a lot of good stuff from gardens. And then I started thinking about something that's under my blanket. Huh. I'll tell you why I was thinking about gardens and thinking about these things. First of all, what do you notice that these might be made out of? What do you think it's made out of? We've got some wood, and what do you think that is? Some sort of metal, yep, and we've got one here. And do you recognize these things? Where have you seen things like this before? Yeah, totally, on our communion table, right? We've got silver ones up there right now, but here are these ones made out of wood and metal. And where does wood come from? Trees, trees. hence my connection to trees. Yeah? Yeah, and wax comes from beehives. Awesome connection. And what about metal? Where does metal come from? Oh, maybe. Where does metal come from? I know it actually comes from the earth. It comes from the earth. It com grows down in it's in rocks. And so when we're getting metal out from the earth, we have to use these big machines that rumble in and get the, the metal out. But so I was thinking about these things because actually these didn't come straight from a tree. It made a stop first. Believe it or not, this used to be a gun. And this metal used to be ammunition or like a bomb or like, right? So that's kind of crazy that the things went from the garden of good to something that could hurt people. But then 
after, and these things came from the church where my dad was a pastor. And the story goes that after World War II, someone saw these things lying around and gathered them up and made these things for us. Why would they do that? Why would we make something out of that? Yep, what are you thinking about? Repurposing things. Why do you think? Okay, why do you think? Well, it is funny. We have this verse in the Bible that says that we should put down our weapons of war and lean into God, and we can end all war. And I thought that was pretty cool. So we can always change course. Like, we can take the good stuff from the garden turn it into something bad, and then turn it into something good again. Let's say a word of prayer together. Dear Lord, thank you for all the blessings you planted for us in the garden. Help us to remember to harvest these things for good. But know that when we misuse them, we can work to fix it and find the good from the evil. Amen. Central. It is always a pleasure to be here, and thank you, choir, for that beautiful choral anthem. It reminded me of a beautiful score of a movie, um, so thank you for that, Nick, as well. There is a word from the Lord. Uh, this morning, we will be talking about going back to basics, going back to basics. I'm convinced that the old saying is true that there is nothing new under the sun. Apparently, the saying comes from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verses 9, that reads, What has been will be again, and what has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes is a book in the Old Testament that speaks to the duality of life with wisdom. Duality like light and dark, black and white. And specifically in this instance, old and new. There is nothing new under the sun can be interpreted as what is new is also old. So let's think about this for a moment. Now, when we consider organic foods, today organic is a premium, a luxury that costs more than non-organic foods. However, humans were eating organic before organic was even a thing. Before the industrial age, there were no pesticides and agricultural mass productions. Everything was farm to table, locally sourced food, fresh from the garden to our tables. Farming was a way of life. If you didn't grow it, you certainly knew the person that did. But with technology, uh, the advancements, farming moved to mass production. Bigger meant better, so we thought. We cannot forget that the invention of processed food, which combined with the high fructose corn syrup, that revolutionized American consumption in the 1970s. 
Therefore, the farm-to-table movement is a counter-cultural movement against the mainstream processed food empire. Farm-to-table began in the 1970s by Alice Waters, a champion of local sustainable agriculture in Berkeley, California. Now, this movement continues today all around America with the seasonal uh, weekly markets in which local farmers attempt to cut out the middle person to sell their food straight to local consumers, just like they did back in the day. We were eating farm to table before farm to table was a thing. So again, there is nothing new under the sun. And in the text this morning, we have a creation story that takes us back to the original farm to table narrative, from garden to table in the Garden of Eden. Our loving and gracious creator made both the heavens and the earth, that the creator God made streams come up from the earth and watered the entire ground. Humans were formed from the dust of the ground. The creator breathed into our nostrils the breath of life, and we became living beings. God planted a garden in Eden where humans were placed to tend to it. The creator made many things, beautiful trees that were aesthetically pleasing and good to eat. And in the middle of the garden was the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And lastly, a river flowed through Eden, watering the garden that humans cultivated. Now, both the biblical creation story, the original garden to table, and the farm to table movement remind us of the basics, and they support the idea of going back to basics, that before technology advancements, before massive growth, what did we have? We had a good, well-ordered ecosystem in which a loving creator formed that which we needed. We had the basics, the necessities of life, food, water, and a loving God. And sometimes it's good to think about the basics because at times we have gotten so far away from the beginning that we must remember our origins. The basics remind us of the simple things, often reconnecting us to the foundation of life. The basics remind us what is, in fact, important. So as we continue this journey of transition, I want to let you know what the staff and I are planning for the next couple of months. We, Central, are going back to basics. We, the staff, will do our very best not to make any assumptions about what people know and what people don't know, that our first goal of going back to basics is simply training specifically on our technology and our governing policies. We will facilitate a Microsoft training workshop, a Microsoft Teams workshop, for those of us who want to know how to use it effectively, and maybe we just need a refresher. There are people who have asked us about how to use Engage, our online church directory, we will go back to basics and simply have an an, an engaged training in which we teach people how to use it so that you'll be able to find your church friends, send cards, make phone calls. Maybe there's some people that you haven't seen in a while and you want to know their contact information. Well, they're in engage, more than likely. So we want you to be able to connect with those in this church through the online system. Also, we will have our uh, com- committees, uh, which are our governing bodies in this church. And many people have expressed that they aren't sure what exactly they're supposed to be doing on their committees. So we will gather the policies and procedures of each committee on our SharePoint drive, and we will facilitate leadership training so that each committee member is fully aware of the governing policies and practices and how that committee impacts the larger organization of the church. If there are any procedures that are understood and not written, Well, we will get those procedures written down for everyone's knowledge, not just a limited few. 
with regards to faith formation. The Congregational Survey suggested that faith formation is very important to Central Christian Church. So again, we are simply going back to basics. In one of the house meetings, a wise man suggested that the church had affinity groups before they were named affinity groups. We had a men's ministry, we had a women's ministry, we had Sunday school based on age. Now, we are not bringing back Sunday school, okay? But we will consider affinity groups, a new members class. I believe that that wise man was correct. And so these affinity groups, first, we will train the facilitators so that the facilitators know how to run and operate the groups. Then we will actually start the facilitation of these affinity groups. Now, some said they were interested in parenting groups. Others uh, said that they were interested in the grumpy old man group. I will call them affectionately the Mr. Wilson group. You know Dennis the Menace? I love Dennis the Menace. Uh, so that might be one of the groups. Another group might be faith exploration. Um, those of us who are seeking ways to cultivate our faith just a little more deeper. Now, we haven't figured out all of the details yet, but perhaps uh, the groups will meet once a week, um, a hybrid or maybe uh, virtually and maybe once a month in person at a restaurant or at a person's house. The goal of these affinity groups are not only to connect us uh, spiritually, but also make sure we're connected together one-on-one. -on -one. We're building community and growing. We will also start a talk back to the text after the service, that this will be for anyone who wants to engage in a conversation about the sermon. Now, sometimes the sermon invokes uh, more thoughts, maybe uh, ideas of activism. And so we just want to talk about that. What emotions come up when you're listening to the sermon? Now, this will not be a seminary class, okay? So nobody has to worry. There will not be a test. It will simply be a conversation about the sermon, an engaging, thoughtful conversation for those who choose to remain in the sanctuary after service. So we're going to get together also the stakeholders who are interested in revamping some of the children and youth ministry. Uh, that is a concern of many of you that has come out of not only these house meetings, but also in our congregational survey. So I want you to know these house meetings are just not for play. We are there listening, writing things down, trying to figure out the ways in which we continue to improve on Central Christian Church. As you will see in the moment of Thanksgiving, uh, Central has poured into the children and youth space upstairs. And I believe we are prepared for that increase in the children and youth participation that all of us are hoping and waiting for. So Central, we're going back to basics to shore up the solid foundation in which we stand. That part of the work of the interim period is to try new things and to figure out what sticks. That the staff and I want uh, us to focus on training over the next couple of months so that we can implement some new old things next year. And once we get some of our internal systems revamped and working efficiently, then we can start working on the external, the evangelism in our outward facing ministries. The only thing that I ask of you Central is to do your part. It might be showing up with a smile on Sunday morning. It might be facilitating an affinity group. Uh, you might be able to help us develop some curriculum for these groups. Or it might be you just come and participate. I don't know what your part is, but God knows and you know. You know your gifts, you know your strengths, and all I'm asking of you is to participate in the best way that you see fit. So let us be prayerful about our collective work now and in the future. I am convinced 
that eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of people the things that God has prepared for Central Christian Church. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, so this is the moment in our service where we invite those who may want to join us in this journey of transition, getting back to the basics, the things that matter to us as a body of believers. Is there one who'd like to join us? And so now we will have the moment of thanksgiving. I know we're a little non-traditional when it comes to uh, sharing of the gifts and the ways in which may, many of us have come to see in the churches we've grown up, where there's a passing of the plate and it goes from one side to the other. But... When you do give, your money is used in ways that do have effect and change. And so this morning's moment for Thanksgiving is to uh, lift up the fact that during the capital campaign last, uh, probably a year and a half ago, uh, money was set aside uh, to redo uh, the rooms that were upstairs for our children and youth. Uh, that was for years, if you guys have not seen room 204, uh, it became a storage room. Uh, it became a place where, uh, if you did not want to see it, that is the place where you put it. Um, and as our groups got larger and larger, there needed to be space for those uh, needed space for those kids and youth to actually be in. And so, part of the advocation of the children and youth team, Jessica and Judith, advocated uh, to make sure that there was some money set aside. Uh, in that capital campaign for that room to be done. And so what has been done in those rooms? Uh, 204 has been completely cleared out, uh, as well as 205B, where the young disciples are at. Plaster has been redone. Um, just like here in the sanctuary, there was plaster up there from a leak from the roof, and it began to fall off, and so plaster was redone. The rooms were painted, furniture was purchased, and now uh, you'll be able to see some of the effects of the things in which the church has done. Um, the team that together, uh, Mary Reinhardt, um, uh, uh, picked out those particular furnitures in the Young Disciples room, as well as in our uh, 204. Now we're extremely grateful for uh, members who donated a leather sofa, ping pong tables, uh, and other items so that the children and our youth can use these rooms uh, for more than just storage. And so these are the reasons why we give. These are the reasons why we are grateful uh, for the commitments that you make financially to the church. <clears throat> May our gifts lay a foundation of hope for all in despair. May they brighten the shadows of those who wander alone. May they cause uh, the weary to join in the morning star and singing your praises. Amen. We invite you to sing, uh, in, uh, to join us as we sing our communion hymn, uh, um, which is Seed Scattered and Sown, number 395 in your hymnals, and we'll be singing verses 1 and 3. Thank you. 
In Genesis 2, one of the fundamental works of the human being, fundamental to the human vocation, is tending the garden. In its own way, Central is a kind of garden downtown. We could debate who's the raspberry, who's the hot pepper, and who's the tomato, but we are trying to grow here a community that witnesses to the kind of world God envisioned at the beginning. And one of the ways in which we care for this garden is through our financial stewardship. You can make a gift a commitment to the congregation by placing a check in one of the trays at the back of the sanctuary, by giving online, or by mailing a check to the church office. And the idea that God has the garden as an image for the way in which life can be brings to mind something that Aaron dealt with in the children's story, which is that things are not, in fact, so garden-like in the world in which we live. And one of the things we learn from the Bible is that God has promised to continue to work with us, trying to increase the potential for love, peace, justice, joy, and abundance, not only among us, but among all. And biblical scholars have a name for this, a nifty little phrase. The end time, the way it was in Genesis 2, is similar to the end time, the way in which God wants all things to be when they finally come to God's purposes. 
And as we come to this table, we encounter evidence from the garden, bread and cup, which God uses as we partake of them together to give us the assurance that despite the way in which things might sometimes seem, God is ever-present, God is always inviting us toward greater depth of love, greater manifestation of peace, greater justice, greater abundance among all. Of course, we do our part, but God, through these signs, says to us, I am with you. And we remember this because on the night in which he was betrayed, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had, given, had, when he had broken it, he gave it to them and said, This is my body, broken for you. And in a similar way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant poured out for you and for many. We give you thanks, God of mercy and majesty, for calling forth the whole of creation. We give you thanks for your continual love and care for every creature. We praise you for forming us in your image and calling us to be your people. We give you thanks that you have come into our midst in the person of Jesus to share the joys and sorrows of human life. We give you thanks for your Holy Spirit, which gathers and preserves us in your keeping. Gracious God, bless all of us with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. May this bread and this cup fill us with your sustaining presence and move us into the mystery of newness of life. May this meal we share together make us the body of Christ, the church, your servant people, that we may be salt and light and leaven in all your creation.
Sometimes it's a shame to break the silence. But we do with the cup, remembering that the taste of the bread and the wetness of the cup are symbols and signs to us of the ever-presence, ever-willing love of God. And for our announcements, there's three announcements. The first is that we are having Trunk or Treat. Uh, That is October 27th. That's this coming Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. You can register on the QR code in your newsletter. Um, In your newsletter, the QR code. We need some volunteers. We need folks who want to decorate their trunks who want to dress up like, uh, you know, Spider-Man or whomever you'd like to dress up as uh, to help uh, with the children. Uh, So again, that's October 27th. That's Sunday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Also, immediately after worship service today, we are having an adult class. Um, It's called Seeking Community in a Polarized World with Dr. Paul Hopkins. Paul, would you like to wave? I don't think people, there you go, there you go. Uh, That's Paul, he's teaching the class for us, Dr. Paul Hopkins. It's from noon to 1 p.m. today, and I think it's running for three weeks. Three weeks, okay. Um, And lastly, uh, next Sunday, it is fall back. So you can either change your clocks or not, just come early, and we'll have coffee and some cookies, and we can sit down and talk for an hour. So it's completely up to you. Uh, But either way, fall back. Uh, so that uh, you can come to church. So thank you very much. Uh, Lastly, our closing song is for everyone born. There should be an insert uh, that you should have received. If you did not get an insert, the words will be on the screen. God bless you.
for the benediction. Dear God, we leave this place in ever your presence. Continue to walk with us each and every as we through this transition to the basics. Amen.